Hello everybody, today we are going to be doing a tutorial for a basic inventory, like picking up and getting objects and stuff like that. Uh, it's not going to be like a huge like RPG inventory system. Tutorial for that is coming later, I've been streaming my progress on that. So this is just going to be a small tutorial on how to pick things up. Um, so first of all, we're going to want to find an item to pick up. Alright. Well, it could be literally anything, but for now, let's have it be, hmm, I don't know, we could do some money, do a gun, banana sword, I think we're going to go with the banana sword. We'll stick with, uh, the streamable, the stuff that are streamed so far. Um... Just to show how simple stuff is. We're gonna make sure that we get it sized decently. So it's not too crazy and it's about the size that it would be if it was in his hand. Alright. And then we're gonna move this down here. Now we're going to be able to pick it up from off the floor. So what we want to do, first of all, is, okay, we want to make sure that we have a way to tell if we picked it up. So what we're going to have is variable. Now a variable is just a float. A float is any feasible number, pretty much, um, with decimal points. Not sure how accurate Dream's decimal points are, but I know you have more than one decimal point of accuracy. Um, so this is negative 1,000, 1,000. Well, we don't need that, because what we're really making here is a Boolean. So a Boolean is a 0 to 1 value. And we're going to use this to say that we've picked up the sword. Alright? And... So we're going to rename this variable and the actual name of this chip or gizmo is important because that's the actual name of the variable that he's used in the rest of the level. Um, so what we're going to do here is we're going to name it banana sword. And we're going to use this variable to tell if we picked up the banana sword or not. Now. You may be asking yourself, okay, what's this and what's that? Well, multiplayer means that we can have multiple banana swords. So, multiplayer would be for if you have more than one player, you have a couple banana swords around the map, and you want to only modify, you want to have each player have a banana sword value. So each player can pick up a banana sword. So that's what multiplayer would be. Persistent dream. This is important for like anything story driven or RPG, anything like that. Um, so basically, if you're making a linear story, this would allow it so you can have like a hub level and then go out into branching areas and come back to the hub and when you pick it up in one level you can come back to another level and as long as you have this variable in all the scenes in your dream it will persist and it will be readable and it will stay the same in all of the scenes and it will modify in all of the scenes which is great which we're going to use for this because it's part of an inventory and we want that to persist we definitely want the inventory to persist and persisting in a dream will also make it save, so when you leave the dream and come back, it'll save and you'll still have the sword. So if you don't want that, then you'd probably want some kind of like resetting tool to tell if you are playing like a main menu really, uh, to start a new save or to continue. Um. So now, what we want is, this can go over here. 
Now, I have a pre-made ship that I've been using on stream, and I'm not I'm going to remake that for you guys so you can understand what it does. Um so this will be like pick up. This is just to pick it up. Okay, so we're just going to place it on the banana itself. And to do that, pick it up, hold down L1, which is snap, and it'll snap to the side. That way, we can delete the banana when you pick it up. And what we're going to do here, is we're going to make another microchip. And we're going to name it Interaction. And this microchip, probably a more extensive one, will be if it is already available. So you can get and use it if you don't want to make it. And this level will also be available public to remix and use however you want. So interaction, all right. What are we going to do with the interaction? Well, we're going to have an output, and this is going to be the interact. Okay, and how do we interact? Well, if we want to stick with the theme of allowing more than one player, what we're going to do, we're going to have a trigger zone, possess controller sensor, and it doesn't have to have a name, and it just has to be one. And this is important, the zone size. So two meters, that looks fine to me. Labels, it can be any label, really. Okay, so with this, what we're going to do is we're going to split it, and when we split it, we want to have this and this. So basically, what we're going to do now is go over here into the sensor's input and get the controller sensor. And now when we pick it up, we only want to pick it up for the player that's nearby. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm also going to make this multiplayer. In order to do that, what this does, what splitting this cable does, is positive, which is if it's detected, not player owned, meaning that the possessed controller sensor that's nearby is not owned by any player, which is technically impossible as far as I know, because it has to be possessed. And I don't think this detects animated, like, record possession puppets. I don't think it does. So what we're going to do is we're going to go over to important properties section. Then we're going to make it remote controllable, and we're going to just drag these cables from 1, 2, 3, 4 to player 1, 2, 3, 4 in the controller. And now we have it so only those players, only the player that is nearby and presses the button will get the object. So now I think a good pickup button or a good interact button by default would probably be triangle or square. And on stream I've been using square, but we are also using that for attack. So I'm going to use triangle this time. So you're going to want to get a text displayer. Turn off the box and the border. Turn off the shadow. And then preferably I like to use white text because it's visible. Most of the time, unless you have like a very bright environment, in which case you should use black or a different color. But in order to get triangle to show up, you can just do that. Go into L2 and triangle to get to this, and then the less than, I think that is. Yeah, the less than symbol, and then you do triangle. There you go. Uh, and you would close that off after you're typing triangle with that, with the greater than. 
and now we just have triangle appearing and you might be wondering okay but it's on the screen so what we can do with that is put it in the scene make it face the camera and this is by preference um, it de really depends like always on top means it will render through everything so if you want it visible like through a wall or through the player if the player standing in front of it and the cameras like this then you'd want it like that um, but if you don't and you only want it visible in the scene like that then don't make it always on top and then after that what we're gonna do is when we're nearby we're going to play this and then our interaction button we're going to output it here and that's basically a simple interaction bit of logic so this is this more simple version of the interaction here uh, that I have published um, basically the only difference is I have it by default square and I have a zone override and an override gate and those allow you to input your own custom trigger zone if you wanted to um, that's helpful helpful for what I'm calling a plug-and-play system uh, meaning that you can just take any microchip I make plug it into your world not even have to open it um, this that's not this isn't completely plug-and-play because you know it's square and not what you want it to be but it works for now I'm probably gonna plan on making like either a slider down here that selects between square triangle and X and circle and the d-pad or a plug-in with this that will take a slider value as well but for now we have our simple interaction chip and what we want to do with that is have a variable modifier and we're going to add to banana sword one and I believe that should work with the multiplayer value because we have the this is a player value output so even though it doesn't have that multiplayer thing I think that should work um, and then from here you're probably gonna want to destroy the pickup you could also turn it off that would work if you want something to respawn instead of destroying it you could have like a controller above it that will take an input which is this interaction and it'll turn this off and then after a timer elapses it'll turn back on but this works for now so now we have a pickup so we put, press play and walk over to it and pick it up all right but now it doesn't show up on the player well that's easily fixed we will take the variable modifier and get the banana sword and we're gonna get continuously wild powered and we will let's put it in microchip and we'll name this banana sword display and you know what banana sword display we just have that and we will take a controller sensor and when we want to equip the sword what we're going to want to do is take our input to equip it and we will get a you know what we're going to use a signal manipulator because i like signal manipulators and we'll toggle output on so that way when you press the button you prefer to equip i am going to use up and you know what yeah up works and then we will have an AND gate 
another AND gate, and NOT gate. So when we are not, um, there we go. When we are not equipped, it will be on our back, and when we are equipped, it will be in our hand. So in order to do that, I'm going to copy this and then just delete the pickup logic from it and go over to him and then scope in to him and then scope on to his back and now we have banana sword on his back and we can take this nope there we go and that's for when it's not equipped and then you want one on his back when it is equipped when I mean not on his back but on his hand when he is holding it which is when it's equipped left-handed or right-handed Ryan mm, I think we're gonna do right-handed all right that looks good to me and then we're gonna take this and hook it up to here. There we go. Nope. Now, I mean, these aren't ports, so I'm gonna name these so you can tell what the output is. Um, so this would be unequipped. And equipped. That's from the stream. <laughs> So, result, oh damn it. Oh well, that's fine. Banana sword display. Alright. And now when we press up, we have it. Yay! Simple inventory pickup. Alright, that was the tutorial. Let me know if you want to see something specific in the comment section, and I will do my best to accommodate you. But I'm planning for the future tutorial to be attacking, like an attack animation, and hitting and dealing with the health and stuff like that. So, have a wonderful rest of your day. Bye bye.